Hello, say we're moving away from area and moving on to volume. So basically the volume of a solid is the number of cubic units contained in its interior. So the, it's based on something called Cavalieri's principle. So it says if two solids have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every level, then they have to have the same volume. I always kind of imagine this as being like a deck of cards. So imagine you've got this deck of cards, it's all perfect and straight, like when you first get out of the box. But then, you kind of slide it over a little, and technically it looks different, but the actual number, the actual space that the cards take up hasn't changed. It just sort of slid over a bit. I think that's one way to kind of visualize it. Okay, and so basically, the volume of a prism, so we're going to go over several different volumes. The first part's always going to be based on the size of one of the cross sections, and the height will tell us <clears throat> the total volume with all of those cross sections kind of added together. But the shortcut of adding over and over is to multiply. So the volume of a prism is the base times the height. So whatever the base of that type of shape is, then you'd multiply by the height. So if you're given these two sides here, so let's see, length times width, you would go length times width times height. And the volume of the cylinder, it's based on the idea that you've got a round base. So if you're given the radius, you could say pi r squared is giving you the area of the base, but then you have to multiply by the height as well, because that would give you the total volume. And then a cone is a little different. This time it's actually not going to have the same cross section for each one, but they've calculated and figured out that you multiply the base times the height and multiply by one third. So since the base is circular, that's where you get the pi r squared in here. So one third times pi r squared times height. The volume of a pyramid volume of a pyramid is very similar, but this time it has a square, we're talking about ones with a square base. So you're going to have the area of the base times one third times the height. And we're going to just use the right formula for each of these. So notice this time we are given a pyramid with a square base. And so we're going to say, hmm, oh, since it's a square, we know it's 10 times 10 for the base. So we're going to say volume equals, this is one of the ones where we multiply by one third, and the base is going to be 10 times 10, and the height is 12. And notice, multiplying by one third is the same as dividing by three. I find it a little more concise to write it that way. So 10 times 10 times 12 equals 120, or not 120, let's see, 100 times 12, 1200 I mean off by one unit, okay, and then we have three on the bottom, that's going to equal 400 centimeters to the cubed, centimeters cubed I should say, to the third or cubed. So notice it's called cubed because this time it has three dimensions instead of just two for like area. Okay, now this time, this is a prism, I guess we could put this here, pyramid, this one's a prism. And notice the base is a triangle, and so that's going to be one half times base times height. Now, this three is the same as this three right here. This would be four. So basically, the base of the triangle would be three. So just for the base part, we're going to have one half times base times height, which is 12 divided by two, which becomes six. And then the volume is the base times the height, right? So I know we're talking about two different bases. Now we're talking about the area of this base right here, which is six times the height is right here, it's two. And it would be different if, if it was, oh, actually, if we turned it, we would still use the same idea. I'm not gonna go into that right now, actually. So we're gonna look at the way it's shaped right now. And then six times two is 12 which in this case would be centimeters cubed. All right, two more examples. This time we have a cylinder. Notice that we've got these two 
basically the base is just repeated over and over for a height of six feet. So we're gonna say volume equals pi r squared times height, which is pi nine squared and then six for the height. Pi times 81 times six. Punch that all into your calculator and you get about 1,526.8 feet cubed. All right, last one. This time it's a cone, even though it's slanted a little differently. It's still that same idea, whether it's slanted or whether it's straight up. Because of Cavalier's principle, we know that it's still the same. So we have volume equals one third pi r squared times height. Let's plug in those numbers. One third pi is 2.2. And the height is 4.5. And I would probably square it first just in case with your calculator. So we end up with pi times 4.84 for the 2.2 .2 squared times 4.5. And dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by 1 third. And then multiply pi times 4.84 times 4.5, make sure you hit equals, and then divide by three to get about 22.8 centimeters cubed. All right, that's it for today. Talk to you later.